Hey Samurai, are you new to my Pondsmith cyberpunk universe and need lore on the main characters leading up to events in 2077? Well, you came to the right place in Night City. In this cyberpunk 2077 lore video, I will be covering the main characters you should have some familiarity with. These include Solo of Fortune, Morgan Blackhand, Rocket Boy Johnny Silverhand, Super Wizard Class Netrunner, Alt Cunningham, Netrunner Spider Murphy, and the infamous Rash Botmos. Morgan Blackhand, rated as the number one solo professional in the business by the Solo of Fortune Annual 2020 Awards, he was widely considered to be one of the most dangerous individuals in Mike Pondsmith's cyberpunk universe. In Cyberpunk 2077, Morgan Blackhand has strongly been hinted to return as a character. So, who is this mysterious Solo of Fortune? A war-worn veteran of the Second Central American Conflict, Morgan Blackhand, sometimes known as the Hammer, first became a solo by accident, not design. Returning home in 2008 to the ruins of his native Brooklyn, he found himself protecting his next door neighbor from an abusive and violent ex-husband. The incident ended with Morgan killing the homicidal maniac and earning a local rep on the streets as a protector of the weak. Morgan's good guy image lasted until a dust down with a marauding booster gang leader, which brought him to the attention of a Militech recruiter. Morgan dealt with the booster with relative ease and thus was made an offer to join Militech. To Morgan's pragmatic mind, working as a corporate solo wasn't much different from being in the army. The guys upstairs told you where to go and who to protect or shoot. By 2013, Blackhand was known throughout the Brotherhood of Solos as a professional equal to the best Europe could offer. In time, Blackhand graduated from being a bodyguard and performing extraction work to tactical operations and his strategic threat management. Although his abilities in these areas were exceptional, his reputation as a hard-nosed, no-nonsense boss, willing to do what is necessary in joining his ops in the field, earned him an even wider reputation. Still, the solo's solo. With no hint of stopping now, Morgan is regarded as the number one in the business. The entire profession was improved by the release of the Enforcer's Handbook with over 1 million copies audited to date, and something that may even be referenced in Cyberpunk 2077. It is obvious though Morgan may have taught many professionals all they know, it is not all that the master knows. Morgan's handling of incidents like the attempted kidnapping of former samurai band member Kerry Urodyne shows the touch of the true master. It is interesting to note that all five of the kidnappers were captured by Morgan and turned over to the federal authorities. They were bruised, battered and beaten, but alive. Any solo can kill, but only a master like Blackhand can eliminate a threat and embarrass the group's sponsors. Still, embarrassing a huge company like DMS can't make it any easier on your career. There is also Blackhand's Street Weapons Guide, the definitive book on weaponry in Cyberpunk 2020, but it offers no additional insights into the character. Morgan is known as a competent martial artist, having expertise in Aikido and Taekwondo. Even though he had some of the highest stats in the game, these were described only as estimates as no agency has been able to precisely quantify him. Mike Pondsmith has described Morgan Blackhand as a mixture of Clint Eastwood, John Wayne, and more recently suggested that John Wick would be a perfect analogue for the solo. He's honest to a fault, has a long-term memory, and never ever harms women and children, but he will make an exception for female solos. He's described as huge, suave, with greying hair and pale, cynical blue eyes. His voice is a whispery, gravelly rasp, menacing but sometimes friendly. His trademark look is all black, slacks, turtleneck, or a three-piece tactical suit, including his trademark armoured trench coat. Pondsmith used Morgan Blackhand as his archetypical solo character. He's not alive because he's the best around, rather he's the best because he's alive. Seems simple enough. Even though Mike wrote the rules for Cyberpunk 2020, he does not have to bend them to play Morgan. He just plays him smarter, as though it was his own personal character who he has nurtured for years and does not want to lose. In the Cyber Generation timeline, Morgan decided he could use a vacation in Night City. He is described as a 52-year-old solo, a stylish professional who has worked for dozens of corporations as a hired gun and enforcer. Well-educated, he deliberately cultivates a rough 
streetwise demeanor based on his tough childhood in New York. For many years, Morgan worked as a freelance solo, doing hits on assigned targets, extracting corporate personnel, and leading Black Ops teams. In 2020, he resigned from Militech and began freelancing, taking only the jobs that interested him. His choices ranged from the profitable, such as his extraction of a multi-million dollar rocker, Alana Devon from DMS to Fugitsu World Entertainment, to the Quixotic. Many an out-of-luck victim threatened by a corporate ops team, booster gangs or street rats, suddenly found themselves with a large, very dangerous benefactor, who saved their ass and then slipped silently into the night. To Morgan's worldview, it was only payback for the various black ops and assassinations he'd run over a long and checkered career. Then came the Carbon Plague and the advent of the Intercorporated States of America. At first, Morgan was suspicious of the ISIS grandiose plans for revitalizing America. He'd freelanced previously for some of those involved in ISA, so knew firsthand what sort of street rats they could be. Blackhand carefully began to plan a backdoor for himself, moving his considerable fortune and investments offshore to Free Trinidad and other unaligned nations. On May 15th, 2027, Corps Set Director Vincent Matthew approached Morgan to run the ICE's new agent corps, an elite cadre of Corps Sec solos acting as the new government's internal security arm. Morgan's response, I don't take money to hunt down a bunch of kids was typical, as was the ISIS retort, a pre-dawn assault on Missoula's Night City penthouse suite. The raid cost the ISIS an entire five-man ops team. Morgan fell back to a safe house in Pacifica and waited. Two nights later, he eliminated a ten-man ops team and disappeared into the smog-choked wreckage through night. Ten days later, Morgan Blackhand walked into the Washington Bureau offices of Corpsec. Entering the offices of a director, he calmly killed Matthew, the second in command in the eight-man security detail, hastily dispatched to stop him. This point made, Blackhand left the building and escaped to Washington before Corpsec could begin to mount any effective pursuit. By the time Alt Cunningham located Morgan to recruit him into this cyber revolution, he was safely established in his offshore Trinidad fortress deep within a web of security remotes and fanatically loyal ex-Militech solos who had followed their leader into retirement. Going back to the Cyberpunk 2077 timeline during the fourth corporate war between Arasak and Militech, despite having many covert operatives in-house and Lazarus group options, Militech came to the conclusion that their ties to the US government were so tight that the rest of the world might see Militech as a deniable extension of US policy. Militech therefore put together a covert operations team which would have a certain deniability of its own. They therefore coaxed Morgan Blackhand into the fray, who costs about the equivalent of three normal covert teams put together. During this war, Morgan was described as the most famous living soldier of the 21st century, having completed hundreds of ops with flying colours. He got enough funding out of Militech to subcontract, a group of highly skilled and motivated freelancers making them answerable to him only. Blackhand's covert ops technique is to delegate duties to mission-compatible pairs. These mini-teams each complete their part of the mission individually, with communications depending on code words and burst transmissions. Blackhand works independently, joining mini-teams where he's needed most. Perhaps the most notable individual in Blackhand's Strike Omega team included Mike Eminem McRae, a medtech who was a field medic who amputated the shattered stump of Blackhound's right arm back in 2009. He went on to medical studies where he returned to the States, but Blackhound never forgot him. When Militech needed a good combat medic who could hold his own in a covert situation, Blackhound tapped Eminem for the job. Militech also benefited from Morgan's network of connections as, alongside Alt Cunningham, they were able to convince Rash Botmos not to attack Militech and to assist them in finding Soul Killer. Morgan Blackhand's main rival was Adam Smasher, the combat cyborg. Adam saw Morgan as a threat to his metal as better than meat philosophy. Adam repeatedly tried to challenge him to a face-off, but Morgan simply ignored him. 
naturally the snubbing stoked the cyborg's psychopathic rage further. The two finally met during the final moments of the Fourth Corporate War. After successfully planting the nuclear demolition charge in the Arasaka Tower of Night City, Morgan Blackhand's Omega team began evacuating from the Arasaka Tower rooftop, only for Adam Smasher to confront him. While the building begins to shake from the detonation of a nuclear demolition charge, the two launch themselves at each other in a last desperate attempt to kill their nemesis. The outcome of the duel was for many years unknown, although many initially thought this was the end of Morgan Blackhand. Cyberpunk Red would confirm that Morgan is back in action, as around 2045, rumours began to spread the legendary Solo had been spotted in various first wave cities. That brings us to this image. A further record, this image is not new by any means. I covered it almost two months ago as it was revealed in German magazine Game Pro. CDPR decided to release it as a wallpaper, so unsurprisingly it is making its way around the internet once more. Is it Morgan Blackhand? Based on current available evidence, one cannot rule out the possibility of Morgan, but what evidence is there to suggest it is Morgan rather than just some random guess? Morgan lost his right arm back in 2009. It was amputated by Mike McRae. The figure in the image appears to have a right cyber arm. I don't think the trench coat is necessarily anything special given the myriad of characters that wear such coats in 2020. However, if it is Morgan, his physical build has changed significantly from the one he had during the Fourth Corporate War. You might recall from previous concept art, another individual appeared with a trench coat and right cyber hand. Therein lies the problem. Is every cyberpunk who looks old, wears a trench coat and has a right cyber hand going to be Morgan Blackhand? Because I can tell you now, Samurai, those trench coat punks are a dime a dozen in Night City. Johnny Silverhand, former lead singer of Samurai and his girlfriend Alt Cunningham, will be integral to the plot of Cyberpunk 2077. Silverhand was known in Night City as a famous and idealistic singer with a signature silver chrome cyber arm. His weapon of choice was the Melorian Arms 3516. Silverhand's discography includes notable hits such as Chippin' In and Never Fade Away from his Cool Metal Fire album. It's been suggested that Johnny Silverhand was possibly born as Robert John Linder sometime in the 1980s, the son of an Apple computer programmer and studio guitarist working the San Francisco club scene. Linder's family is rumoured to have been killed during the collapse. Records appear to indicate Robert joined the US Army, training as a soldier in the Special Operations branch. Silverhand would reveal in his Sins of Your Brother album that he was a former US US Marine who had deserted during the Second Nicaraguan conflict. This album triggered a wave of sentiment that resulted in the National Amnesty Program for a World Central American Conflict Veterans. As Silverhand himself remarked, if you can face the truth, you can face anything. So I faced the truth. Following an unsuccessful assassination attempt by Biotechnica, Silverhand would release his Clone Wars album that dealt with the idea of bioengineered humans being created as slaves for military and industrial purposes. Shortly afterwards, his girlfriend, Alt, would be kidnapped by Arasaka. Alt was a super wizard class Netrunner and the inventor of Soul Killer. Soul Killer uses an advanced matrix recorder to copy the entire personality of an intruder, storing it in a huge database. It then wipes the original personality away, leaving a mindless husk that eventually dies. Arasaka wanted to acquire Soul Killer and so forced Alt to develop a version for them. On April 13th, 2013, Silverhand, unable to penetrate the security of Arasaka Towers by himself created a diversion by announcing a samurai concert just outside the buildings. 6,000 ardent fans turned up to the party. As the Arasaka guards began to lose their nerve, one of them accidentally fired into the crowd. Furious pandemonium ensued as the fans retaliated. As the fighting begins, the soul kill is used on alt. She floats naked in a sea of stars. Around her swirls the matrix of Soul Killer towering into measureless space. Alt reaches out with her enhanced mentality, shaping and forming. A brief flare of thought, 
and Soul Killer sucks away the minds of her three Guardian techs, letting their bodies drop. From the mind of the head techie, she pulls out the access codes to the mainframe's inner levels. She strips the memory of data, downloading it into her hidden files throughout the net. Twenty million dollars vanishes from accounting to reappear in a sub-account under her name. Pulling Toshiro's signature from his checking account file, she signs his name with a flourish. Using the access codes, she activates the room monitor. She can see the three techs slumped senseless in their chairs, her own unconscious body limply sprawled across the central console. Akira moves towards it, and Alt triggers the room lasers and cuts him in two. His body hits the floor with a steaming thud. Toshiro's eyes widen in shock, then narrow as he realizes what what has happened. Congratulations, Miss Cunningham, he says with a mock formality. It seems you have found a way to escape your demise. You move and your laser meets your retorts. She tracks the defense system onto him, locking it to fire at the slightest position change. Then she turns back into the soul killer construct, wrapping its power around her, gathering herself to transfer back into her body. The room staggers, lurches, as five pounds of plastic explosive slams through the ceiling of the elevator, creating an instant fireball. The lasers go wild, spilling a maze of ruby light in every direction. Toshiro throws himself flat, toppling the cyberdeck and breaking Alt's connections. She flails widely with the construct too little, too late. Three figures burst into the room, smart guns laying down a pattern of fire through the maelstrom. Johnny spots Alt still form, slumped over a contour couch. He takes her in his arms, trembling. Across the room, Rogue looks away. Well, 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 says Thompson, striding across the wrecked room towards the corporate head. What do we have here? Looks like kidnapping and maybe murder. They're going to put you away for a long, long time, Toshiro-chan. His green cyber-optic winks bright as he transmits live and direct to his news net. His head swivels right to left with practiced ease as he subvocalizes the opening to his story. The story he will use to break Arasaka in Night City. Johnny stares a long time at Alt's almost lifeless body. There is a feeble pulse, but Alt is gone. Lost in the machine, trapped behind crystal. Lost forever. Gone. He stands away from the couch. Cut transmission, he says to Thompson. The green cyber optic goes dark. Silverhand's own eyes are featureless white marbles. The hand convulses in fury by his side, locking onto the H and K in its low slung hip rig. The metal fingers lock to the butt, scrabble clicking along the pockerized grip. He just doesn't care anymore. He's dead inside. To hell with it. Silverhand raises the big black gun. A red pinpoint centers on Toshiro's forehead. Bang, says Johnny. The hand convulses. Bang, says the gun. Silverhand turns to gather up her still warm body in his arms. Behind the wall of monitors, a disembodied alt screams to him, but he can't hear her as he walks away. Shortly afterwards, Johnny Silverhand would go into hiding amongst the nomad groups for almost two years with his friend Santiago. During the Fourth Corporate War, August 20th, 2023, Silverhand would return to fight Arasaka once more. Militech gathered together a dream team consisting of the best operatives Night City had to offer, including Johnny Silverhand and Morgan Blackhand. Their mission to take out Arasaka's arcology with a nuclear demolition charge. Silverhand would lead Team Alpha, consisting of Rogue, Shaitan Thompson and Spider Murphy. During the mission, the team found out that Alt Cunningham was captured by Arasaka and was being held as a digital ghost, aka Engram, inside the Arasaka mainframe. Going somewhere? Adam's voice cuts through the silent offices like a bullet crack. Someone screams cover as machine gun and shotgun fire from Arasaka troopers spray through the narrow hallway cutting three of the team spec op troops in half. Spider scrambles behind a heavy pillar as Rogue and Johnny take a position behind office furniture wholly inadequate to the job of stopping heavy fire. Spider watches Shaitan simply fade into near invisibility against a wall. Rogue pops off a burst from her rifle then fires two grenades. Arasaka seem to want the lab intact and are not using heavy weapons. Team Alpha was under no such constraint. Shaitan fires off blast after blast from a portable cannon he calls a shotgun, but is tagged by an auto gun burst that sends him rolling. People on both sides spasm and fall as high velocity death fills the entire floor of the building. Somewhere, Spider hears Thompson scream in pain. Things are bad. There are too damn many of them. Plus that Borg, time to decide. Bullets chip her to cover while she hurriedly links her cyberdeck into the heavy suitcase memory stash, carrying Alt. No 
time to double check, no time to confirm links or space available. She launches herself into the net, dragging the linked icons that represent Alt's personality, memories, and whatever else it is that makes her different from an expert system. All Alt, she thinks to herself, is a hope and a prayer. Here goes nothing. With a virtual toss, Spider fires the various portions of Alt out into the net, tagging them with a marker so that she can maybe retrieve them someday, and if she gets lucky enough, re res them back into her second best, now first best friend. On the other side of the room, Johnny crouches under a desk, fighting with his past between bursts of gunfire. I left Alt last time, just abandoned her. Not again, not ever. Better to burn out, says the hand. Yeah, he says to himself, and he knows what he must do. Spider spends just a few seconds in the net, an eternity and never enough time. She comes back to find her cover still getting powdered, although the cacophony has diminished. She sees Rogue discarding her empty rifle and pulling two heavy pistols. Spider draws her own flechette pistol, its heavy weight somehow comforting in her hand. Suddenly, Johnny's voice rings out, not in song, but in challenge. Hey, Steelhead, let's rock and roll! Johnny is standing in plain sight, a Militech SMG in one hand, the Malorian in the other. He begins pumping rounds into Adam. Adam turns, but hesitates, astonished at the audacity of a rocker, challenging him with weapons that won't even dent his armor. An arm comes up. The auto shotgun in it opens fire. APDS rounds cut the young rocker in half. Johnny spins and falls to the ground, a surprised look on his face. The Malorian still smoking in his fist. It only takes a second, but a second is all Shaitan needs. He suddenly seems to emerge from the wall behind Adam and grapples with him. Seeing an opening, Rogue and Spider react as one. Rogue stands, bullets streaming from her pistols like tears, raking down Arasaka troopers. Spider sits up and fires, picking off targets and putting them down, one shot after another. It's all just a V-sim, she says, just a game. Adam lurches around, but Shaitan's grip is that of desperation. Spider sees the Shaitan's right arm hangs shattered and limp at his side, blasted by a grenade. It's only a matter of seconds before Adam gets free and takes them all down. Get out of here, I've got him! Shaitan's hollow voice bellows of the two women. The rest of the arrows are down, but so are the spec ops. Rogue, Spider and the crippled Thompson are alone with two battling Borgs. They can hear more soldiers coming. They know they have no choice. A spider moves to the rocker's mangled form. Rogue grabs her arm, her hard eyes boring into Spider's own. Johnny's dead, Spider. Help me get Thompson out of here. Rogue's eyes speak of a certainty and incredible pain, all slammed away behind an iron will to survive. Keep the meat baggage light, Rash used to say. Spider reaches for the data suitcase but sees that it, too, has been savaged by gunfire. It's wrecked. She quietly wishes Alt good luck. But Johnny will be avenged. Spider thinks to herself as she and Rogue drag the wounded Thompson to the elevator. Moments later, the nuke would detonate destroying Arasaka Towers. Silverhand's body was never recovered. More than 10 years later, rumors began to circulate that his body had been found in cold storage in a body bank in the wreckage of Old Night City. These rumors were never substantiated. By 2025, it became known that Alt Cunningham had survived in the net, as she established the Ghost World, aka Shangri-La, in the ruins of bio-destroyed Hong Kong. Somehow in 2077, an engram of Johnny Silverhand is currently coexisting with V as a result of a highly experimental biochip V has installed. Silverhand wants V to find Alt Cunningham, for what purpose currently remains elusive. Alt Cunningham, also known as Arteria or Gaia, was introduced to the narrative alongside her boyfriend, Johnny Silverhand, in the scenario Never Fade Away. Mike Pondsmith revealed that inspiration for her character came from Alt Carroll, an American model from the 1980s. Mike suspects that Alt Cunningham was the fantasy girlfriend of the CDPR crew when they were growing up. A cybernetic bikini layer, so to speak. It's always beautiful when Mike dispenses the secrets of Cyberpunk 2077. Johnny was not aware that Alt was a super wizard class netrunner and the creator of the Black Ice program, Soul Killer. Soul Killer version 1.0 started as a storage matrix to contain artificial personalities, but Alt managed to evolve it to contain living engrams, in other words, a person's ghost. Alt discovered that she could transfer the ghost from a computer to a physical body and back again, essentially a version 
version of Immortality. It had one drawback though. It was a stationary program locked to a specific system architecture. Arasaka saw the potential to weaponize Soul Killer 1.0 as an anti netrunner program that uses an advanced matrix recorder to copy the entire personality of an intruder, storing it in a huge database. It then wipes the original personality away, leaving a mindless husk that eventually dies. Arasaka wanted to develop Soul Killer as a weapon and so kidnapped Alt to force her to finish their version. Silverhand and his friends break into the Arasaka Tower while the Soul Killer is used on Alt. However, Alt created a backdoor in the program, giving her full control once her ghost had been transferred. She quickly used her new abilities to eliminate all the Arasaka guards and transfer $20 million from Arasaka into a sub-account under her name. Alt then hacked into the tower security system and has Toshiro, the individual in charge of Arasaka research operations, at her mercy. Before she can transfer her ghost back, suddenly a loud explosion disturbs them. Silverhand and friends burst into the room, causing Toshiro to throw himself for cover. In the commotion, Alt's cyberdeck is disconnected, breaking her audio connections. Johnny Silverhand, upon seeing Alt's lifeless body, executes Toshiro, unaware that Alt is still alive and that her ghost can be transferred back. He disconnects Alt's still warm body from the equipment and carries her away, while Alt's ghost screams out of the mainframe monitors, but no one can hear her. Details of Alt's activities during the interlude before the fourth corporate war in the 2077 timeline remain elusive. In contrast, Kei Arasaka never stopped dreaming of having a mobile killer that could roam the net lobotomizing his opponents. Thus, he began research into developing a new soul killer, using fragments of code that remain from the original and alt's notes. By late 2020, a new version of soul killer, V2.0, was developed. Until the Shadow War started, Arasaka was often outclassed in the net. Militech was able to eliminate many of Arasaka's best netrunners. They also acquired the services of Rash Bartmas and Alt Cunningham. Arasaka thus retaliated by unleashing Soul Killer 2.0, which instantly turned the tide of the war. Many of Militech's netrunners and their support were killed, and fear began spreading within Militech's ranks. Knowing what was at stake, Rash managed to track down a destroy one of Soul Killer's base of operations, but he accidentally gave away his position during the Dark Errand. This allowed Arasaka to capture Alt and assassinate Rash. Alt was forced by various means to assist in the development of the Soul Killer 3.0. During Militech's attack on the Arasaka Tower in Night City, information was leaked to Johnny Silverhand that Alt was being held captive, and thus he aimed to save her. Johnny and his team were not aware that they were being used as decoys to give Morgan Blackhand's team the opportunity to set a nuke off to destroy the towers. During the mission, Silverhand sacrificed himself to buy Spider Murphy just enough time to download Alt back onto the net. The Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart kit confirms that Alt Cunningham was safely rescued. During the time of the Red, Alt becomes the leader of the ghosts which were disembodied victims of Soul Killer. She found a new home, Ghost World, or as some call it, Shangri-La, in the ruins of bio-destroyed Hong Kong. Rash Botmas has broken into the toughest systems on Earth and committed multiple acts of corporate espionage with relative ease. He took on Netwatch and never lost, explored the farthest regions of cyberspace and claimed to be aware of the existence of aliens. Unlike other Netrunners who use a pseudonym such as Spider Murphy, Rash Botmas uses his real name to give his corporate enemies and Netwatch the proverbial middle finger. They know exactly who Rash Botmos is, but could never do anything about it. In the early stages of his career, Botmos worked legitimately with some software companies under the proviso he would not hack their systems, which usually lasted less than a couple of weeks. Once Botmos worked for CCI Development, with his assistance, the company started developing many innovative software products. Unfortunately, Botmos dropped a few surprises into the database code, including several scandalous sex tapes. While the company fired him, Botmos simply used a kill switch on all their systems as a departing gift. Botmos's last escapade was only two semantic degrees short of fatal. Nailed by a particularly nasty type of black eyes that placed his heart into continual fibrillation, he barely managed to activate his cryogenic celestial parachute backup system in time. The result froze his body but left his hyperactive mind still aware and jacked into the net. Botmos was too paranoid to tell anyone to retrieve his body should he be killed. Thus, he became a frost-covered chunk of frozen meat, deteriorating in a cryogenic freezer, disguised to look 
look like a refrigerator while still managing to be the best hacker in the world. During the Fourth Corporate War, Militech asked Rash Botmos for his assistance against Arasaka. He was adamant against working for a corporation no matter how tenuous the connection, but Alt Cunningham convinced him to join her in the hunting for the Soul Killer 2.5 program. During Dark Errand, Arasaka agents finally tracked down the apartment Botmos resides in. The apartment is interesting because it potentially could be something CD Projekt Red could draw influence from for or one of their side quests in Cyberpunk 2077. Bart Moss worked on his apartment project for more than 10 years, with it being in full operation for at least 3 years. Everyone who lived in the apartment were corporate workers. Almost all of them were programmers, but every single one of them has a neural processor. This was no coincidence. Rash arranged by various ways to get everyone who didn't have a neural implant to leave the building. This he accomplished through a combination of credit destruction, police file tampering, posting rewards in bounty hunter magazines, and even getting other businesses to offer incompetent people outrageous employment opportunities. At the same time, he located suitable people for his project. A suitable person was a corporate worker, essentially someone competent, but not particularly bright, who had a neural processor and was socially inept. One by one, Rash took these people and infiltrated them with a customized anti-personnel program of his own design. While it didn't erase or replace their entire personality, it overlaid a part of their subconscious with his own directives. These directives included being a model citizen, a hard worker, socially private if not reclusive, and chipping in to the net every night. These victims all moved into the apartments which had been vacated. Soon everyone in the apartment building was a person with a hidden subconscious personality program. Now, Everyone in the building knew each other on site. Strangers are immediately recognized as such. To prevent infiltration, each of the drones communicates with each other through a complicated Enigma code version of small talk, so outsiders would suspect nothing. Now, one might assume that when an outsider is detected, the rash would have his drones go into full combat mode. He was far smarter than that. Visitors can go through their lives largely unmolested. For all intents and purposes, the residents are nice, congenial, helpful people who aggressively yet passively resist anyone intruding into their apartment block. Rash did not want to attract attention with indiscriminate homicide. Instead, the drones offer their assistance, and if none is needed, they radio him. He then used subsonics to activate the intruder code in other residents in the building. The result is that while individual people come and go, there is always someone within a line of sight of the intruder to observe them. During the dark errand, where fighting started in earnest with Arasaka agents, every Everybody in the apartment building abandons all pretense and starts fighting viciously. In addition to the residents, Rash had a secret army of robots hiding in the apartment, such as Tarantula, Centipede and Beetle robots, and Bumblebee helicopter remotes. The final boss of Dark Errand was the legendary Deathwish. That is, Deathwish, the Cyber Kitty. Solid black outfitted with titanium rippers in its mouth and paws, Deathwish, the Cyber Kitty, protects the refrigerator that the frozen body of Botmos rests in. Botmos upgraded the Cyber Kitty's programming to produce a deadly mixture of feline instinct in Jackie Chan martial arts techniques. Following the demise of the Cyber Kitty, Arasaka agents riddle the frozen body of Botmos with bullets. Suddenly, a set of red flags whip up next to the fridge and start waving mechanically. An old-fashioned bell by the door starts ringing loudly. Red light flashes, of a printer next to the bell. The printer spits out three pieces of paper, strains of Beethoven's Ode to Joy start booming from his stereos throughout the Conapt. Conapt is a cyberpunk phrase coined by Philip K. Dick, referring to a condominium and apartment. All the firing suddenly stops as confetti explodes from the ventilation ducts, and a small arachnoid robot drops from the ceiling, clutching a high-density data chip in its limbs. It says, Have a cookie. You're 30 seconds before the grand finale. During the escape, an agent grabbed three papers from the printer. First one reads, Congratulations! I am now apotheosized. Expect changes under the new management. The second, printed in Japanese, says, Learn to read English already. 
Arasaka today. The third says, Receipt. One rash, Botmos. Take your damn reward, but beware the fiscal chewworms before they eat your brain with sharp, prognathous jaws, leaving nothing but flagellating, orgiastic glee pods decomposing where your soul used to wrestle, screaming against the chains which bound you to your pathetic Weltanschauung. Yes, of course, that's a German word. I love Nietzsche, so go smoke your kimono. The data chip was a database detailing every aspect of the OTEC Sino war and how Eurobank was directly responsible for it all. For those unfamiliar with the Fourth Corporate War, while Arasaka vs. Militech took center stage, it initially began with OTEC and Sino. Despite these revelations, at the end of 2020, nothing happened to Eurobank. In taking down Eurobank, the resulting scandal could have triggered another financial collapse, but this time in Europe. Given that Rash Master's now dead, and Alt Cunningham has become a ghost, I suspect an argument could be made that Spider Murphy is currently the best net runner in the business. Spider was part of Militech Team Omega alongside Johnny Silverhand, Rogue, Thompson and Shaitan, who helped Morgan Blackhand take down the Arasaka Tower at the end of the Fourth Corporate War. Shortly afterwards, she gained the distinction of tracking down K Arasaka after the tower was destroyed. K Arasaka attempted to escape from Night City in a sea viper only to find all his bodyguards unconscious and a young beautiful woman sitting Caesar dressed in a kimono waiting to speak with him. Spider informs Kay that he must use the soul killer on himself, stating that it is the only honorable thing for him to do. Spider tells Kay, think of it as seppuku. After all, you are a samurai, are you not? After Kay uses the soul kill on himself, Spider finishes the fourth corporate war narrative before the events of Cyberpunk Red with the words, Sleep well, Johnny, Morgan, and Rash. Spider Murphy is very intelligent and quick witted. She has nurtured and developed an artificial personality known as Robin Phillips for use in case she ever did get caught. This personality is bolstered by seeds of information she has sown in the net over the years, so to all appearances, Robin Phillips really exists. Spider is lightweight and bookish looking, very much a netron instead of a physical person. Nevertheless, her voice synthesizer, motion detector, and pain editor make her an effective part of an escape team. Spider's most telling feature is her long red hair which she habitually wears as a single thick braid. It is rumoured that her real name is Arabella, but she has never used that name since she ran away from home at age 14, as it is common for netrunners to adopt a pseudonym. I hope you like this introduction to Cyberpunk 2077 lore. Thank you for chipping in.